Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page three. So I did a mock-up of page three, and I want to show that to you before we actually construct it so you know where we're headed. So these are going to be the design papers, and then here is the mechanism. This one, the mechanism that's going to be inside. So inside this cover oop, is going to be a pop-up, and we've done this before, and you've probably seen it lots of places. It's a very popular pop-up card, um, and we're going to put that inside this. So that's what the mechanism looks like. So these are four three by fours. Each one of these is three by four and the bottom, the base is 12 by six. And again, it's gonna look like this. So now I'm gonna show you how to construct that. Some of you may already know how to do that. You're gonna start with a 12 by six and you're gonna score in half. 12 by six, score at six. Then you're gonna start, then you're gonna take a four by 12, four by 12, and score at three, six, and nine. And then the last piece is four by 12, four by 12. You're gonna, and this is the mechanism itself, so this is very simple. So um, again, this is four by 12, you're gonna score at three, six, and nine. This is six by 12, and you're gonna score at six, and that makes a square. The mechanism is, again, four by 12, four by 12. You're gonna score in half this way, and then also in half this way. So this is a score line at six, and this is a score line at two. And then once you have the cross scored, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the paper up until this score line meets this score line. So you already have the cross. You're gonna take this ledge of the cross, the score line of the cross up to this score line. And then you're gonna press it down. And that's how you're gonna get the cross. Okay, so take this score line, the, the cross score line up to here, and then score. Then you're gonna do the reverse on this side, bring the score line up, and then cross. Hopefully that's clear, and if not, we're gonna go ahead and do it together one time. So let me get my 12 by four. <clears throat> okay, so here's my 12 by 4. We're going to score it in half at 6. Right here. And then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees and score in half again. And half of 4 is 2. So we have this cross here and here. So that's in half lengthwise and in half again, like that. I'm gonna go ahead and brush that. Okay, now here's the tricky part. You're going to curve this around. You're going to get this, this score line right here to meet up with this score line. So that score line, score line, and there's the point, and then you're gonna do that. So that's half of the X for this pop-up mechanism. Now we're gonna do it the other way. We're gonna pull it up, and we're gonna bring this score line to this score line. And 
making sure the point, the intersection of all the score lines is right there. Okay, so that's it. So now you have an X and a cross. Make sense? <clears throat> So you've got your X, you're going to push this in, and then you're going to push these two in and do that. So there's your X, they're pointed down, they're valleys, turn this into a valley, and there you go. And now you have this arrow pointing up. And this becomes the mechanism, and I rushed through it, I wasn't very precise. Um, and you should be as precise as possible, you get this mechanism. And this is what becomes the twist pop for your element, okay? So again, score at two, score at six, and then you just pull this up until this score line meets this score line, just like so. Then you go on the other side, left and right, this score line meets this score line, and then that's what you have, okay? So we're gonna push these two in. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. You're gonna push the two long ends in and come around so it looks like that, and then press everything into place. These two become the planes, and this becomes the valley. Okay, so I've already done that here, and so we're ready to construct it now. And again, this is the, the mechanism that you see in here. So here's our six by six card, or six by 12 scored at six card. Now we're gonna take our Those become the planes. Sorry, to get it to fold right. So there we are. There's the, the plane. Whoops, that's not right. There we go. Now it is. I was missing one side. So you have two legs and a point. The point is going to go to the center of the card. So let's mark the center of the card. <clears throat> and since it's six inches, the center will, will be at three. Okay. So this point needs to go right there at the three. I don't know why my blue cap keeps following the white cap off. I tried to figure it out, but I got kind of tired of it. So now we're gonna put glue on this side. Could be glue or tape, doesn't matter. Whatever your preferred adhesive is. Okay. Now line that point up to the center of your card and then um, go ahead and try to close it and make sure if it's going to scoot down you want to let it happen right now looks good so I'm going to burnish that into place okay now the next thing you're going to do is apply glue to this triangle let that set for a second and it's hard to see let me get a contrast sheet see if I can find something white or cream or something yeah there we go so you can see that the edge of the legs are hanging out just a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the trimmer after it's dry and trim those little bit little bits off there it's not big a big deal but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
some set aside mock-ups. I'm also going to link um, another paper crafters uh, explanation and tutorial on how to do this pop-up. If you're having trouble following mine, look in the description and show more and there'll be a link to another person who does these pop-ups. Hopefully it makes sense to you, but it may not. Okay, now we have what's gonna become the part that actually pops up. And again, this is 12 by four, 12 by four, and you're gonna score every three inches, three, six, nine. So when we're done, this is gonna pop up just like this, okay? So the piece that's your pop-up should be the same length as the mechanism. This can be narrower, but it can't, it, it shouldn't be wider. It can be narrower if you want, but I went ahead and made it basically the same width as the pop-up. Now, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna draw a line here, which is basically the height of one of these, right? So it's three inches tall and this is gonna be glue. And then the opposite is gonna be true. So this is glue and this is glue. So we're gonna draw a line here and this is glue. So we're gonna glue this side and this side. This will have no glue. And in fact, because it has no glue and no real purpose, I'm gonna recommend that you go ahead and trim it off. So that's what I'm gonna do. The side that has no glue is gonna get trimmed. Okay. So we're gonna trim from here, and it's not gonna show, so the precision is really not that significant. I'm gonna trim that, and you're gonna trim at the score line. Oops. Now we're gonna do the same thing opposite. So I'm going to trim this and glue this. And it just gets some of the extra paper out of the way and helps the mechanism function a little bit more cleanly. It's not necessary. You can actually leave it on if you prefer. There we go. So now it's very clear by looking at this where we're going to add the glue. So this is gonna have glue and it's gonna hold this side down and this side's gonna have glue and it's gonna hold this side down. And this could also be tape. So I'm gonna take this corner, and this is a mountain, mountain, corner, and apply it directly to this corner flush. Okay. I'm gonna rotate it around. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're going to add our glue here. And then we have a mountain. This would be the valley side. We're gonna take this corner and place it directly on this corner. Now go on the inside and create that peak. Can you see it right there? Okay, so there's your mountain. The glue's not dry, so I'm gonna try to be more patient.
Now I'm going to let everything dry. For a little bit of time, I'm going to put some weight on it. And then when we come back, we'll start to decorate it. And I'll show you how we're going to keep it closed. But right now, I'm just going to put some weight on it. Be back soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. And, sorry, we're working on page three. So we built the mechanism, the pop-up mechanism, so that I'm gonna do something a little bit, oh, this is actually not the right one. Shoot. Never mind. Hang tight. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, so we built our mechanism. Sorry, that was another prototype. And um, what I want to do is these two areas, I want to extend the flap by an inch each. So on this side, I'm going to, and I'll tell you why. On this side, I'm going to add a card, um, and it's going to open this way. And that's why I want this space here, so that when this is closed, um, uh, or when this is open, we can still reach in and open this uh, card. So create a card that is eight by six, eight by six, and you're gonna score it four, eight by six. And I covered the front and I cut my parts for the inside, but I haven't put them together. And this card's gonna be held together with a magnet. Don't place your magnet yet. Um, wait for me to put this all together and then close it because so much is going on um, with this mechanism and the way it closes. I may find that it makes more sense to move the magnet up or down. So hold off on that, get your card ready, but don't put your magnets in yet. Okay, so now we're gonna extend this by one inch. And so the way I'm gonna do that is um, just by adding an inch line here. And then when I apply this, I'm gonna apply it right at that line. So we don't have to add an extension. The card is gonna do that for us, okay? So I'm going to mark this at one inch here and one inch here. And the card's going to get installed just like that. So it's going to shift it over a little bit. And that's how we're going to get that one inch clearance. So let's go ahead and do that. Then we're going to add an extension, an actual extension, not just a card on the other side. Use this to help me see my line okay so I don't put glue too far over okay now I've got my little pencil tab marks here I'll take my insides out and I'm gonna apply my card just like so and I'm gonna use this one inch to go here. And actually, I'm gonna lift that real quick. I'm gonna um, add this first. And it is about one and one eighth, so it's gonna go slightly under the card. And I'm just butting it up to the mechanism under here. Just pushing it straight in. Oops, I got a little, a little bubble in there. Okay, now we're gonna add this, like so. And I can still see my tick marks. Uh, one of two anyway. I'm gonna use my grid to help me line it up. Okay. Okay, and there is my card. I'm gonna burnish this all into place. Okay. <clears throat> so far I don't think it's causing an interference here, but Basically, um, this corner right here, when it comes down, it hits between here and here and sort of slides closed. 
So that would probably be the place that's least ideal. So I'm in fact gonna go ahead and move my magnets down about a half inch to here. Okay, let's do that. Much easier to do now than later. So I put them at about center. I'm gonna bring them down. I should have just left the tape on, it was so strong. And of course I burnished these, that's why I'm having so much trouble getting it up. We're having a great day here. It is so sunny and beautiful outside. I took my dog out for W-A-L-K. I can't say that word out loud. <laughs> or you're gonna hear a lot of crying in the background. So um, yeah, so my husband's out uh, playing in his Jeep and I thought I'd come in here and craft for a little bit and then go for another W-A-L-K because it's so pretty. And we've got another storm coming in so I'm gonna take advantage of the weather today and tomorrow, and then we've got rain for the next three days. I think, so it was up here, I think this is about right. Okay, so I'd say it's at the third mark, roughly. So I chose this very simple pattern. It's gonna go side by side. This is from the eight by eight. would help. <laughs> I put it on the magnet and forgot the card. Yep, I think that's going to be good. Okay. Another thing people do is round the corners. I don't like that look. <laughs> um, so you can do that if you want it to swing close a little easier. The corners that wind up touching is this corner, so it would be your two valleys. But frankly, like I said, I don't like the look, so I'm going to leave it as is. Okay, so we've got that in place. Now, we're going to do something a little bit fun here. We're going to do a little pop-up between um, for this page. So this is fussy cut from one of the 12 by 12 cut aparts. So I fussy cut all the way around it. I left the bottom border on and then I scored right where the frame is to kind of tuck some of that in. And it's going to go be applied to the bottom of this page. And when it's opened, you're going to see this, okay? So it's kind of fun. 
I just noticed I haven't inked anything, so I'm gonna try to do that real quick. Knock off some of this white core, and then we're gonna go ahead and adhere it. So it just naturally folded right here where that mountain or this rock ends. And then I fussy cut around this guy and the dragon. Not the easiest thing to ink, but I do like knocking that core off if I can, when I can. Okay, I think that's most of it. Okay, now I gotta think about this for a second, so I may stop talking. In fact, I think I'm gonna use some uh, removable tape. It's called artist tape. figured out and then we'll glue it down. Okay. So we're going to do two score lines. I'm going to score right here at the black, and I have a score line here. So this is going to fold around like a U, and then it should lay flat. And I'm just going to do it freehand. I'm scoring right along where the there's gold, then there's black dots, and then there's gold. And that's where I'm scoring on that little part of the frame. Let's see if we can't make this work. And I think these two little tabs are what I'm gonna wind up gluing down. want tape or adhesive on, on that little part that we just folded over. Okay. So what I want when it is fully opened is I want this to still have a bevel. And I think this is how I achieve that. But we're going to find out in just a second. And of course we have to get that seam lined up somehow. Okay, let's see if that's what's going to do it. <laughs> this is just a test, so don't panic if it, <laughs> if it doesn't work out.
Yeah. I think that's it. <sighs> Give me a second. Ow! I'll be right back. Okay, so I did it, finally. So, um, basically, you're gonna have two score lines. One's like at a quarter inch, and so it's just a tiny little tab, and then one's at this black line. So the reason it's gonna continue to have this bow is because we did two score lines. If we only did one score line when I opened it up, it would lay flat. Um, so once you close it, you open it up to 90 degrees. If I did two score lines, it would look like that. It would come like that, and then when you open it all the way up, it would lay flat. So the second score line, I mean four score lines versus two, the second score line is what's allowing it to con continue to bow. So basically find your crease <clears throat> and then place um, your object, in, in this case this Fussy Cut Ephemera card, into the card and glue those two tips, close it, so it's gonna glue on one side, close it, it'll glue on the other side and that's what you, how you get the placement. So, um, yeah. And if it's confusing to you, then what you can do is fold it this way because you know this fold needs to line up with the card and these two would be straight out. And um, yeah. So make sure you're putting glue on the right side, the correct side, which if you laid this whole thing flat, it curls around the back and that's where the glue is gonna go. If it's laying flat, then the glue is on this side until you fold it around. So hopefully that made sense. I think that's gonna be cool with a couple of pictures here and this is gonna kind of slightly overlap. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna look neat. Okay, so this side's done. Now we wanna extend this side a little bit. So we wanna extend it an inch. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna mark it an inch out and then we are going to um, add an extension with black cardstock. And I think I've got this one trimmed down. Yeah, so this is, uh, it's about three inches. It, it doesn't need to be really large, but it does need to overlap this and then extend an inch. So where's my ruler? Here it is. So we know we want an inch from here over. So I'm gonna mark that. Maybe. I can, here it is, find my pencil. Okay, and so now we're going to add an extension, basically from, that's not wide enough, from that line over. Here it is, I even wrote extension. So this is four inches. So I'm gonna mount it, so it'll be extra thick here, but that's okay. We're gonna put one mat over the top of it. And the reason I didn't just make a bigger card is because um, it exceeds 12 inches. I'm already using a 12 by 12, so I think it would need to be 12, 14 by six, and I don't have 14 inch paper. So that's why we're doing this. Okay, and then this is, we're gonna pick up that pattern again from over here and add it here. And I need to trim this to fit. I think this is a cool page. This is the page that I got from the link below um, let me double check that. That The lady um, that I got this from is Russian and I can't even begin to think I can pronounce her name, but this is, um, I've modified it slightly. It looks the same, but I, well, I think I have. <laughs> she doesn't have a tutorial, so I'm not sure. So I kind of uh, reverse engineered it by looking at it and trying to figure out, you know, how to uh, get the same results. So I think it needs to be a little bit shorter too. Not, not much. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Let's get some ink on it. Move it down. And then this whole mechanism is gonna get put on page eight. I mean, 
page three. I don't know where page eight came from. I really like this pattern and I just hate that it's on the back of this because I, I hate giving up this print. I wish they would have put it on the back of something else. Like, why couldn't it be on the back of this? <laughs> I wouldn't care so much about giving up that print. Because I want to use all of these sheets, but I can't because some of them are going into the cover and whatnot. So I've got a little pencil mark here that I can see. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Okay, now we've got what essentially is, for some reason that doesn't want to fold, uh, now a seven inch card versus what we had before, which was a six inch card, okay? So now we're ready to decorate these panels and I'm gonna put a cut apart on one of them and then the rest is going to be uh, coordinating cardstock. If I can find, here it is. I set this one aside. So I think I want this one to be here. It makes me turn a little. So both of these are eight by eight. This is from the 12 by 12, cut apart. Okay, these are, it's roughly three by four, could be a tiny bit smaller. So I'm gonna go cut uh, three panels and I'll be back shortly. So this little thing doesn't wanna crease for me for some reason. Seems to have, be having trouble with that. Um, maybe when everything's stiffer, it'll be okay. Or worse, it'll be worse or better. <laughs> okay, that's coming along. I'm gonna uh, probably put some kind of a something over here in the corner as a little tuck spot. And let's see, do I have anything already cut out? Yeah, maybe I'll do this. Um, maybe that's a little too matchy matchy. Anyway, I'll come up with something and uh, I'm gonna go cut those trim pieces out and then we're going to uh, add this background and then this is all gonna get mounted on here. So I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, everyone, I'm back, and we're gonna go ahead and lay this down. So make sure your uh, pocket is on the right side. This is gonna be the base for page three. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our pop-up mechanism. And I'll show you what I did. I went ahead and uh, covered the inside of the pop-up mechanism with this red paper, which is from the eight by eight. It has the shields on the other side or crests, I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. Flags. Okay. All right, there we go, page three. All right, now this is gonna go down like this, um, but we're only gonna do three sides because this is gonna go into a pocket. And as you can see, I've got magnets here, and this is gonna come up and over this mechanism to hold this closed, because it's kind of thick. So, with that being said, I had to recrease this. It wasn't quite straight, so I'm hoping it's good to go. Let's make sure it is right side up. And it is not, it goes this way. So there's the red that I added, and then there's that one cut apart. And now it's right side up, okay. So this is, no, I didn't get recreased the way I wanted it to. So it's a little bit off on the corner. So I'm trying to rescore it. 
ever so slightly so that this little piece of black cardstock doesn't show. Okay, I think I'm good. Now again, we're gonna do um, three of the four sides because we're gonna have an insert that's gonna hold everything closed. It doesn't go very deep, it goes about to there. So this should be plenty of glue to keep this all anchored. Okay, we're gonna center it uh, top to bottom, left to right. Should have about a half inch on either side and an inch on the top and bottom. Let's see. Okay, that's a half inch. That's a little, a little bit off, but it's pretty darn close. So I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna press all this into place. Okay, now this is gonna slide into that little pocket we just created. Easier said than done. What's it getting stuck on? Right. Don't know. So now we're going to place the opposing magnets. And I'll give you the measurements for that in just a second. In fact, I'll do that first so you can see where we're headed. So this is four and a half by 11, four and a half by 11. You're gonna score at I'm going to score it four and a half. So four and a half by 11, score it four and a half, and then score at nine, and then score at nine and one eighth. So you have a little bit of a gusset because this is so thick, it needs to reach up and over. Okay. And I just split this because I didn't have a full enough um, piece of the red cardstock. I split it between these two. You don't have to do that. It's just two panels and then it closes like this, okay? So four and a half, nine and nine and one eighth. You're gonna put it in the pocket. You're gonna center it. Oops, you're gonna close it and put it in the pocket. And I honestly don't know what it's getting stuck on. I'll have to figure that out. Push it all the way closed. It needs to come all the way up to that score line. And then you've got that little bit of a gusset should come up and over, and then now we're gonna add our magnets. But first I wanna make sure it's centered. It looked like it needs to come down just a little. So you should have about the same amount on the top and bottom, a little more. And this matters because that's gonna affect the placement of the magnets. Okay, now we're gonna add the magnets that are gonna hold this whole dealio closed. Line it up the best you can. Okay. And then we're gonna decorate this. Okay, so I'm gonna go back, pull this back out. So this is from an eight by eight, and this is from eight by eight also. And then this is, I'm just gonna leave black or blank. This is from uh, eight by eight. And this is the rest of that. I'm gonna use this to cover up my magnets. So red, black, and cream are the colors we're using. 
for this mechanism. Or for the closure, I guess. And it doesn't have to be an insert. You could have added just a little flap there. But I thought this was really fun. And also give you a little bit more room for either journaling or um, another photo. Okay, remember you've got that gusset there, so you don't want to uh, interfere with that because that's what's going to keep everything closed. So that's done. Okay. And it, because it's so bulky, I wanted to use two magnets. Okay, so now, did I get it? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, it is. Okay, I was just looking at the way it went in, if I was happy. Now we're ready to cover this. I'm gonna pull this color back in. And I just realized it's too small. So we need to cut this. I forgot I added an inch inch to it. So I'm going to find another piece of this. And I think it's, yeah, it is uh, from the 8x8. Eight eight. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> so now it's so bulky, it's going to be hard to um, get a straight cut. Six by seven. Let's start with that. Six. Let's see if I've got the right height. Yep. See, that's really bugging the crud out of me. So be careful. Um, I'm disappointed with that. I can live with it. There's not much I can do. I don't want to waste all this paper but it's bothering me. I tried to recrease it and it just didn't work. Um, there. Nobody will notice it but me. Now you will because I told you, but. I probably should have that. I probably should have cut this piece, the designer paper, before I put it all together because of this big lump, um, but not add it until after we get our magnets in. But that's why it's done in this order. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna ink it and we're gonna glue it down. This is my favorite pattern. I'm preserving the 12 by 12s because I'm fussy cutting those elements out. Um, the eight by eight is just way too tiny for me to deal with. laid my pick tool. I don't hear this. It was blending in. It was hiding in plain sight. I like having all my tools match. I think it's very pretty. <laughs> but the reality is if everything was like fluorescent colors, it'd be easier to spot on your desktop. the whole thing. Let's get all this out of your field of vision. Oh, I made a mess. 
I'm gonna get a wet wipe out real quick before that dries. <sighs> My whole desktop's a mess. I'd come back and do that another time. But this was a big page, so thanks for your patience here. So we've got this closure, we've got this beautiful pop-up, and then we have this card that opens with a pop-up. And then over here, we've got this card. A lot going on here. And again, this came from that Russian artist, and I was just so impressed with her. So be sure to go over to her page and um, go through the walkthrough. Um, I was just so impressed, and you will be too. She's got some other stuff too. Great channel. Uh, doesn't look like she does tutorials, uh, even in Russian. Um, I went to her Facebook page and I couldn't find anything, so. I think I want to go ahead and, well, no, I'm not. I would like to put something here, but I think it'll catch. So I think a smooth picture is fine, but anything that's got any kind of inset edge, probably not a good idea. So I do want to do a little something. see where it hits so this corner hits about right here and this corner hits about right here so if you want to do anything the idea um, uh, situation would be to place it on the outside of the of the card of course and I don't want to put it on the inside because there's already this is already here so let's see I did kind of like this idea originally we could put that down and have no interference and we could even tuck a little another one of the, the cut aparts that's a, a journaling card in here I think we could probably do both of those so let's do it so that's a mink and glue this down and then we're gonna call it finished for page three and then I'm gonna take a break start planning page four and I'm going to uh, probably do some more fussy cutting. Um, I miss having a chipboard, but I really like these flourishes. I think they really add a lot. So even if I had chipboard, they're usually so simple. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I think that's what I wanna do. So I'm just doing the outside edges, like so. Now let's make sure it'll still close. Yep. It's hitting this, but it's hitting it on the smooth, smooth part of the card, so it should, shouldn't be. Oh, gotta close that first. It won't be a problem. It's kind of scooting it a little bit. Maybe put it that way. Let's see what happens. Yeah, perfect. Okay, we'll straighten this out. You just have to wiggle it around until it finds its magnets. So that, as you can see, is a very fat page. So that's page three. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys. I'm going to put something here. I don't know what, but something. Um, this is too matchy-matchy, so I'm not sure what I'm going to put here. But I'll do a little something on the cover. This would be a good place for, you know, like an ephemera cut apart or something. So I'll probably dig about and find something that looks good there. And then you'll see that in the walkthrough. And um, I'll be back soon. Talk to you guys later.